Elliot at Clifton Marina to tell you all about the Wet Earth Colliery that was built in the 1700s. Clifton Marina is in the Irwell Valley in the Carboniferous era about 345 million years ago. Lots of coal was formed here. There was a movement in the Irwell Valley Fault which pushed the coal up about 1,000 metres, meaning it was much easier to mine. In the 1700s, coal was very important because, because people didn't have electricity or central heating. Houses had big coal fires that were used for heating, cooking and, and heating baths. In the 1740s, a local landowner called John Heathcote decided to mine the coal on his land. He built a colliery, which was called the Wet Earth Colliery, because it had lots of problems with which water was seeping in. The water came in a rate of 60 gallons per minute, which is one gallon a second. In the end, they were spending more time getting the water out of the mine than the coal, so that it could not be effectively used. Wingley Bridge near Wingley Ware. We've come to Wingley Ware to tell you about how John Heathcote got the mine up and running again. In 1750, he met an amazing engineer called James Brindley, who agreed to help, to help him. Brindley surveyed the area for two years and came up with a fast, fantastic solution, which made, which made the water flow uphill for the first time ever. Brindley wanted to figure out a way to use water from the river Irwell to power a wheel to pump up the colliery. He built a weir on the river Irwell at, Ring at, Ringley Dam at Ringley to dam the water. He chose Ringley as if it was the high point, but John Heathcote did not own the land of this side of the river. So Brindley, with the help of a local man called Matthew Fletcher, built underground tunnels to channel water from the weir to the colliery. At Giant Seeds, George the Water in Tunnels dropped down a shaft and went underneath the River Irwell in a U-shape, where the water flowed up the tunnel and onto Heathcote's land on the wet earth side of the river. In 1756, work was finished and water reached the colliery to power his pump. Down there is a weir. This is the canal that led to the wooden water wheel starting all the way over there and coming all the way down here then it goes through there to the water wheel it's a brilliant invention this is where the amazing wooden wheel which was powered by the water system built by james brindley the water flowed and in and made the wheel turn. This power worked the bucket, the bucket pumps, which brought water up and out of the mine. And it all flowed back into the river Irwell along a tunnel called Triace. This was in use for almost 170 years. In 1867, Brindley's original wooden wheel by a turbine and in 1923, those were replaced with steam pumping the girders. You can see in the wheel chamber what half of this. This is a galpit. It was built by Matthew Fletcher in the, 17, the 1740s. It was used of, until the 1928. Called the galpit because Galloway ponies would walk around and pull strings from the mine. This mine is 100 metres deep. It was used for men to go up and down as well as collecting coal. Parents sat in a basket and were lowered down. Children were hung on the edge and lowered down. I bet that was scary. The gal pit was the only shaft for a long time. Now we'll take you to the next one. This is Fletcher's Folly. A new mine shaft was sunk here by Ellis Fletcher, Matthew Fletcher's nephew, who owned his estate 
and was about 82 metres deep. It began to be used on the 18th January 1805. Instead of using Galloway ponies to wind the ropes up and down into the mine shaft like a gal, like a gal pit, a steam winding engine was built instead. The chimney is known as Fletcher's Folly. It was connected to the boiler's house where steam for the wi winding engine was generated. The chimney is known as a folly because a replacement one was built in the 1890s. This is the fan house. When the Wet Earth Colliery first opened, many children worked there and their job was to open and close doors so that fresh air could flow through the mine. I don't think I would have liked that job. I bet it would have been hot and dark and scary. By the late 1700s, children were no longer allowed to work at the mines. At first, at first, a furnace burned at the bottom of the shaft, which was supposed to blow out. Stale air and draw in fresh air, but meant the mine was very hot. This was replaced in 1889 with the fan house here. The fan house was made by the Walker brothers of Wigan and kept the air moving without making it hotter in the mines. This cottage was built in the early 1700s and remained standing until World War II. Workers from the colliery probably lived here, but the last known person to live here was Mr. John Whitehead, known as Farmer Jack. He bred pigs, kept, kept hens, and grew apples and pears on a small orchard. L.S. Lowry sketched a picture of this cottage, showing it to have two floors. The smaller outhouse we can see here was probably the kitchen, the wash house, and the larder. Clifton Wet Earth Colliery was important for three main reasons. Number one, this was the first deep mine to be sunk in the Irwell Valley and the first to use steam. Number two, it had a very long working life, especially compared to other pits. It was open for almost 180 years from 1750 to 1928 when it closed. James Winsley ingenious water pump system which was in use from 1756 to 1924 just before the colony closed. We hope so you've enjoyed watching this. We've enjoyed making it whilst learning more about our local history.